Hi everybody, welcome to the Cozy Rainbow Podcast. My name is Tammy, but my students know me as Miss Haddad. My name is Bianca and my students know me as Miss Carrillo. Today's episode is all about persuasive writing, specifically persuasive letters. So we're gonna start off with our three questions. All right, Tammy, true or false, persuasive letters don't have any purpose. Uh, no, I think they, they have a pretty clear purpose is to persuade Good the job. reader. Good <laughs> uh, My next question is, can persuasive letters only be written to people that you know? If you're under the age of 13, yes. <laughs> but no, you could, well, you could write a persuasive letter to anybody. All right, we'll go more into okay, details great. about that in a bit. My final question is, do you think ads are a type of persuasive writing? Um, I'm going to say I think it depends on the ad, but for the most part, yes. Good job. Before we start today's episode, I want to remind you to check out our Teachers Pay Teachers store to find a free listening guide and other printable activities. Today's episode is brought to you by Amazon Music. You can try out Amazon Music for free and support our podcast by visiting getamazonmusic.com slash cozy rainbow. Once again, try out Amazon Music for free and support our podcast by visiting getamazonmusic.com slash cozy rainbow. So let's go ahead and dive into persuasive writing. Uh, The definition for persuasive writing in general is writing that tries to persuade the reader to think a certain way or to do something. Mm. Um, There's many types of persuasive writing from commercials to ads, songs and poems, letters, and a lot more. So they are persuasive writing. Yeah, so when you think of an ad, I want you to think of what's the purpose of an ad. Typically, it's to try to get you to buy something correct but in order to get someone to buy something usually not always but usually sometimes the audience might have to be persuaded or convinced to buy that product especially let's say that you love squishmallows Mm -hmm. but there might be another company that's trying to sell stuffed animals Uh. so they're both going to have ads that are going to try to convince you and persuade you to buy their product right or i'll give you another example i think of where advertising is very important when you go to the store like Walmart or something, they have their generic brand of stuff. Like they'll have like the generic tomato sauce and then they, and you know, their tomato sauce is only going to be like a dollar, right? The mm-hmm. generic brand. But then there's tomato sauce. You could buy a fancy organic brand with a special basil Parmesan flavor for $10. And the reason like who would ever buy a ten dollar bottle of pasta but it's usually because of advertising exactly so the advertising or ad for sure is trying to get us to buy something or feel a certain way about their product yeah Alrighty, so our challenge for the listeners this time around is going to be writing us a letter about which squishmallow is the best yeah or trying to convince me of buying a specific squishmallow because <gasps> I don't own any squishmallows. This is it, you guys. Okay, if you write in a letter, I bet you, I bet you, Bianca's gonna buy the squishmallow of the whoever. Yeah. Okay. Great. Let's, so let's, you can, let's you can, dive right in. <laughs> let's dive right in. Let's dive right in. So you, okay, you can write a letter trying to persuade me to buy squishmallows. Period. Or you can try to convince me or tell me of which is the best squishmallow ever. Yeah. Alrighty. So first off. What is the purpose of a persuasive letter? We kind of already covered this, is to persuade someone to feel or do something. Um, So the first thing we're going to go over is really who writes them? Anyone. Anyone can write a persuasive letter. For example, you will be writing, the listeners will be writing letters to us. A really good example is people tend to write these letters to someone in power or leaders of a community. Mm. So 
you don't need to know someone personally to write a letter to them. So one thing that was a really cool experience was when I was working at a certain elementary school, we were able to write letters to the governor of Las Vegas trying to persuade him to help us out with a certain cause. Or you could also think about politicians. A lot of adults or even children, some schools, they will write letters to their local politicians to try to get them to do something, help them do something, or feel a certain way. Yeah, I would say as a kid, you might feel like your voice doesn't matter, and that's not true. You know, you have to be 18 years old to vote, but I would say, I think if I were a politician, and I'm not, but if I were a politician, I think that receiving a letter from a kid would be a lot more powerful and have a stronger message than just any old adult. So first off, let's start with the parts of a letter. The first part of a letter is the heading, which is also the date. After wow. that is the greeting, so dear blank. Your body, which is you trying to convince your reader to feel or do something. And finally, your closing and, of course, your signature. Ah, uh, yes. Now that we know the parts of a letter, let's go into the writing process of the letter. Writing a letter is follows the similar writing process of your pre-writing, outlining, drafting, revising, and editing, and finally publishing. When we're writing our letter, we want to make sure to pre-write so that we know, first off, what it, our position is. So what are we trying to get our reader to feel or think or to do? So for example, everyone listening is going to try to write me a letter as to why I should buy Squishmallows or try to convince me or Tammy which Squishmallow is the best. Uh, you want to know who you're writing to uh, and you want to make sure that you are researching and brainstorming different points that you want to bring up in your body. Your outline is finally getting all of those ideas down and flowing so that you know, alrighty, I've got my key points and I also have things or reasons to support my key points as to why you should feel or think a certain way. You draft it out, you write it out, you then revise and edit. Um, a good tip that we learned in an earlier podcast was to make sure that someone else uh, reads your writing and helps yeah. you revise and edit. Yes, you definitely want to run your letter past somebody else before you just go and send it to Bianca and I. Yes. And finally, the final part is publish where you write the final draft and you send it off to your reader. In mm -hmm. this case, it's me and Tammy. At our email account, cozyrainbownv at gmail.com. Or, or you could read us your letter out loud using on Spotify or, you know, wherever you're listening to this. I think Spotify and Anchor, they both have a, a way that you can send in a voice message. And then you can also send a voice message on the podcast page of our website. Perfect. So with that all being said, let's go over our three questions that we started off with and just really review. Uh, true or false, persuasive letters don't have any purpose. They have a very clear purpose. Mm -hmm. And our persuasive letters, the purpose of writing them is to tell Miss Carrillo that she needs to buy a Squishmallow. Yes. <laughs> Let's see if you guys can convince me. Here yes. we go. <laughs> and then our second question was, can persuasive letters only be written to people you know? No, you could actually write them to, you know, government officials. Leaders in your community. Yeah. It doesn't have to be just government. So You could even write it to your parents. I'm pretty sure I have probably done that before, you know. Write a letter to my parents saying, hey, you need to, uh, I, I deserve to only clean my room once a week or uh, who knows what. <laughs> a really popular one with your parents is why I should have X pet. So why should I have a dog? And yeah. you write your letter trying to convince your parent or guardian of the reasons why you should be able to have a pet. And or whatever saying that you'll take care of it and you will clean your cat's litter box. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I, it's all coming back to me now. <laughs> <laughs> and then our final question was, do you think ads are a type of persuasive writing? Yeah, I do. They are a type of persuasive writing. Absolutely. Great job. So with that being said, I can't wait to read these letters to see if 
you can either persuade me to get a Squishmallow yeah. or you can get Tammy and I to side with you on what is the best Squishmallow ever. Yes, yeah. And so once again, you can send in your writing submissions to our email, cozyrainbownb at gmail.com or I would actually prefer if you read your letter to us using the voice recording options that I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So if you want to read those rules, you can check them out on our website at www.cozyrainbow.org. If you are under the age of 13, you need to have a parent send in your letter or persuasive writing to us. Um, keep an eye out on our Instagram at Cozy Rainbow Envy to see if Bianca buys a Squishmallow. And we will be announcing our winners on an episode that comes out on July 10th. Okay, everybody. Thanks, Thanks for listening. listening.